discretion is advised. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Marley and I are back out on the farm. We're going to be doing some coyote hunting tonight. I was out here for a good portion of the day, did a little bit of hunting. I've got the new American Air Arms Evil. This is the HPS version in 30 caliber, and it's putting out 88 foot-pounds. Now, I picked this up directly from Tom over at American Air Arms. I did have him talk a little about the gun, which I'll roll for you guys. Then I'll bring you back. Um, I'll show you kind of what I was up to today. I was able to get a little hunting in. I gotta say, I'm very impressed with this gun. It's just a lot of fun. And so I'll roll that and then I'll bring you guys back. Dana gave me a ring the other night and said he was gonna do some coyote uh, hunting on a permission and he asked if he, there was a gun that he thought would be good for that. So I told him I have a uh, 30 caliber HPS, um, the one that we call the Hunter uh, here that I just got back from doing some testing with in Arizona and that he can grab that thing and uh, this is it right here. This is pretty much the final, uh, well it is the final production version of this gun. You know, what's the difference between the HPS and can my existing Evol be turned into an HPS and the answer is yes and no. Um, there are a lot of common features about the two guns but there are also a considerable amount of differences. We have a balance valve instead of the standard Evol valve and along with the balance valve we have a new bolt design that is 5-axis CNC contoured. We have a new port design that is also 5-axis CNC contoured we have an adjustable dwell, which is on the other side. I'll show you that in a moment. And the airflow through this gun with this porting is about 67% greater than a standard Evol. So that's where the power comes from. And because of that higher airflow, you can con uh, generate considerably more power with the same barrel length. And when you get in the longer barrel lengths, then the power is just going to go up and up and up. So on this side of the gun, we have a few features that are new to the HPS and unique to the HPS as well. Uh, this is the dwell control and what this does is allows you to fine-tune your velocity. When I say fine-tune you could be anywhere between a few feet per second or you can actually do a gross, a large amount of adjustment with it as well, but it works best as a complement to the regulator pressure. So if you wanted to bring your velocity up 10 or 15 feet per second, this fine-tune adjustment allows you to do that. You want to bring it down 10 or 15 feet per second, it allows you to do that as well. If you just needed to make a huge change, it can do that, but you'd be better off changing your regulator pressure at the same time, just for efficiency, not because it's, it's a, it can't work, but you just get better efficiency that way. Uh, also on here, we have a adjustable hammer. Uh, it's basically a wheel inside. You use a little blade screwdriver and it's got little clicks. On here, we have adjustable regulator and it has a range of adjustment from roughly you know, maybe 1800 PSI to 3100 PSI. So it's got a very wide range of adjustment. On the HPS, we kind of center it at 2000 PSI. You can turn it up or you can turn it down. Uh, like most adjustable regulators, you can increase the pressure very easily just by turning the knob. If you want to decrease, decrease the pressure, you're going to drop the reservoir pressure down a little bit before you decrease it. Um, I know everybody will say, yeah, I can bump mine and shoot it and bump mine and shoot it. Well, this one will do that too, but we don't recommend it. So the power level for this gun is pretty wide. You can set it up any way you want, but for example, right now it's set up for JSB 44 grain pellets. It's shooting them right around 945 and that's almost almost 90 foot pounds about 85 foot 88 foot pounds something like that very interesting because most of the time we tell people not to run them that high but doing some recent testing it seems that it, it kind of likes them so we're going to do a little more testing with the higher speed with the pellet but if you wanted to run this gun at at 80 foot pounds or 75 foot pounds very easy that little adjustment can be made here uh you can also do regulator adjustment uh 
one of the nice benefits of this is if you're going to run standard 30 caliber power levels, say 44 grain in the 890 range, um, you're going to pick up some shots with this gun. Uh, the efficiency is, is that much better than, than the older Evols. So shot count on this gun at, eight, uh, at 880 or 890 is right around 46 shots. This gun is completely barrel and caliber change uh, able. The barrels unscrew, so if you're going to go to a longer 30 cal barrel or shorty thir shorter 30 cal barrel, maybe a slug barrel, uh, maybe a bench rest barrel, all that has to be done is it has to be unscrewed and new barrel screwed in. If you want to change calibers, you're looking at a barrel, a chamber insert, and a bolt. A bolt so, and we'll have kits for that. So it's completely designed to change calibers quickly, easily, uh, if it makes sense for you. Uh, it has that ability. If you want to run a slug barrel, you can do that. If you want to run a pellet barrel, you can do that. We're going to have a lot of barrel options coming down the road. The other kind of cool feature is we have a caliber plate here that's magnetic. And if you buy a caliber uh, barrel change, you just get the appropriate plate with it, pop that one off, snap that one on, and you know what you're set up with. Coyote hunting is what it is, uh, but I'm pretty sure Dana can, uh, can make a good harvest here without too much work. So it was really nice to get out, visit with Tom, and get to learn a little more about this gun. You know, I think the first um, thing I noticed about it, shooting it, was how much easier it is to cock. It seems to be a lot more linear, and the gun produces a good amount of power, you know, for a 30, 30 caliber and it is externally adjustable which is something you know everybody wanted but it's just a really solid feeling gun i was able to stretch it out today we were hunting ground squirrels out to 140 plus yards and i was able to connect with a few of them So tonight I'm excited to you know try it out for some coyotes. I'm not going to go into too much detail because um, we do have other videos um, that we've done of kind of our setup. Um, I do have the One Leaf Plus setup on the top here, um, and that allows me to record during the day, and it also has a built-in IR that I can use during the night. And so I'm excited. We've got a good couple hours before um, the sun goes down and uh, we get ourselves set up inside the stand. So right here in front of me is a road where the coyotes usually come down um, in the evening. And if you're lucky, sometimes you can sit here. Across that ravine is just about 70 yards. Maybe we can get lucky, but once the sun really starts going down, um, we're gonna make our way inside the stand and get set up. So this is pretty much our setup for tonight. We're gonna to be sitting here. I've got the ding donger out there. We've got chicken carcasses. Coyotes are bound to come in. Usually as soon as the sun goes down, you start hearing the activity and we'll start seeing them come in. And in some cases, you know, it won't happen until later in the evening, closer to midnight. And so it really is a waiting game. Um, that's where the ding donger comes in handy. We don't have to constantly be scanning the area. One of the other things I bring with me is a 600 watt power bank. I've got a long USB cord and I can just use this to plug directly into the one leaf and that way I can leave it on. I don't have to worry about the battery going dead and that way when the ding donger goes off um, this thing's ready to go. It makes it a lot easier for me um, being able to charge stuff.
Good morning guys. It turned out to be a fairly busy night. The coyotes didn't come in where I really expected them to come in. Um, they're coming along the border of this this field and I was able to shoot one of them. I think I got him down. We're just gonna hike up here and take a look. Oh, there he is. He ran for about 30 yards where he collapsed here in this field. Now this um, wasn't an area that I really expected to see the coyotes. Um, normally they come in on the other side, um, but I wasn't seeing any activity as soon as the sun went down. And I started hearing howling around 10 o'clock. And so I swung off to my left, saw a whole pack of coyotes. Um, coming down to the border of this field where it steps down into where we have the chicken carcasses. Spotted this guy, took the shot, and he took off to the, the left, and I'm assuming collapsed right here, which is just about 30 yards. And so it was a slow night. We didn't see any more activity. I think it really was the temperature, but we still made it happen. The evil worked really well. Cheers, you guys. I got my morning coffee. We've had a really nice trip out here. It was nice to get out, do some hunting. I really like it. This thing is cool. I really like the caulking on it. A lot smoother than the, the older version, um, in my opinion. And, you know, I like the fact that it's externally adjustable. And we're going to play with that in a future video. Um, I'll get out to the range. We'll do some shooting with it and see what it, it does but i just wanted to get it out here do some hunting with it get myself familiar with it and uh, we were pretty successful we did some ground squirrel hunting with it got a coyote down if you guys have any questions you know leave a comment i'll try to answer um, i will leave links in the description for all the, the gear we used but i really appreciate you guys and i look forward to seeing you on the next one